Hi, welcome to this video lecture. Today we're going to be simulating a chemical reactor. We're going to develop a dynamic simulation model using a software tool called Collimator. So Collimator is a lot like Simulink but for Python users. So uh, first before we drive this model I'm going to just go over some of the data that we'll be using. So we're going to be working with a model that has an inflow um, of fluid coming into the reactor and outflow and it has these ranges here. We are going to be introducing a chemical species into our our model and we're going to be talking about a reaction where we have component A that gets converted to B via a chemical reaction. So um, the reactor is going to have this inlet concentration, CA0, that's nominally comes in at uh, 15 kilomoles per cubic meter but we're going to run simulations to see what happens to the reaction when that number changes. All right, we are working with a reactor tank that has a diameter of four meters, a valve constant of 3.2, and then this K naught. And specifically, we're gonna, um, this K naught is our reaction rate constant. That's a constant that describes how fast our reaction is gonna go. So our reaction rate law um, is going to look something like this. The rate of our reaction is going to be equal to this K naught multiplied by the concentration of A multiplied by the reactor volume. And if looking at all those terms, this is going to have units of kilomoles per minute collectively. Okay, so let's develop these balances that we're going to use. In the pre previous video lecture, which you can access by just clicking in the comments down below, we developed a volume balance on the reactor. And we had this simple model where we had Q in, which is the volumetric flow rate with units of cubic meters per minute. Um, and then we had Q out with the same units. We had this model that the change in volume with time is pretty simple. It's just Q in minus Q out. This is a gravity drained tank, meaning that the higher the liquid gets in the tank, the more gravity uh, force you have pushing down. Um, and so the outflow is proportional to our valve constant multiplied by the square root of height. And then, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, this is all refresher from the last video. If you want more details, just look at that last video. So now we're going to add a couple of component balances. And first, we're going to do a balance on chemical component A. So using that same control volume, we're just looking at how is the rate of change of chemical A uh, changing in our reactor with time? So now we're assuming that in this inflow, we have a certain concentration of component A coming in at CA0. Once that uh, chemical hits the reactor, it starts reacting. That's where we get the A going to be. And then we have a certain concentration of A in the reactor, as well as a certain concentration of B in the reactor. And then of course we have a certain volume in the reactor. So collectively these three variables are my dynamic state variables. And I want to end up with a differential equation that explicitly solves for each of these dynamic state variables. For volume we've already done that. So we have our first balance equation that's going to tell us how V changes with time. Let's do the same for A. So we're going to start out looking at the rate of change of accumulation in our reactor, the rate of change of accumulation of chemical species A, and we're going to look at the rate that chemical species A is coming in, the rate that chemical species A is going out, and then the rate that chemical species A is consumed. All right, let's start with accumulation. So we want to know the rate of change of component A in moles uh, or kilomoles with time. So what we would do is we would say, we define this derivative with time of this quantity CA times V. So if we multiplied CA times V, that is going to give us uh, units of kilomoles. So CA has units of kilomoles per cubic meter 
and then volume has units of meters cubed. So when we multiply those together, we get kilomoles. So that's telling us how many kilomoles of component A are in the reactor at a given time. When we take the rate of change with respect to time, that gives us now units of kilomoles per minute. Okay, so each of these terms should have units of kilomoles per minute. So coming into the reactor, we have our flow rate, Q in, times our inlet concentration, CA0. Going out, we have Q out, multiplied by the concentration of A in the reactor, so CA. And then finally, what's being consumed, we go back to our reaction rate, and this is going to give us K0 times CA times V. So now we will compile this equation and we'll say that the rate of change with respect to time of this quantity is equal to in minus out minus what's being consumed. So here we have Q in times CA0 minus Q out times CA minus K0 times CA times V. So now we have our a differential equation. We need to take a couple more steps here. We need to solve this explicitly for DCA DT. So we're going to do a little trick. We're going to apply the chain rule here and get that the derivative, and we, we keep both of these things inside the derivative operator, and that's because they, are both, they will both be changing with time, neither of them is a constant, so we can't just pull one out as a constant. So we'll apply the chain rule, and we will get uh, CA times dV dt plus V times dCA dt, is equal to now everything on the right hand side. Okay, so now what we will do is we're going to solve this equation explicitly for this quantity dCA dt. So I'm going to take this whole term and subtract it from both sides. So that allows us, that term is now eliminated from the left-hand side. Now I'm going to take this whole quantity and divide by volume. So we divide both sides by volume. Now we're left with an equation, a differential equation that is solved explicitly for DCA dt. So we started with our whole component balance here, and then we really just did some algebraic manipulation and some calculus manipulation to uh, get this to be solved explicitly for DCA dt. So that gives us our second differential equation corresponding to our second state variable. Let's do the same thing for component B. So here we have accumulation in, out, and then in this case B is being generated because the reaction rate is, the reaction is A going to B. So accumulation, we have the same thing this uh, d by dt, looking at this quantity cb times v, and remember both of those will be changing with time, so we gotta leave them both in that derivative operator. There's no b coming in, there's just, in this problem, there's no b in the inlet flow, so we don't have to worry about an in term. Out is similar to our last one, it's q out times cb, and then this is being generated, B is being generated at the same rate that A is being consumed. This is a one-to-one -one reaction where every mole of A is being converted to a single mole of B. So our generation term here is K0 times CA times V. So we'll do the same kind of exercise we just went through. Here we're going to have... Um, CB times dV dt plus V times dCA dt, and sorry, that is dCB dt. This equals minus, because so remember this is accumulation equals in, minus out, and now this is a generation term, so it's plus the generation term. Minus Q out times CB plus K0 times CA times V. 
All right, so we're going to want to do some similar rearranging here. We're going to subtract this term from both sides. And then divide both sides by volume. So that guy's gone. And we divide both sides by volume. And there is our third differential equation, our third uh, material balance, if you will. So the volume balance is like our overall material balance. And then we have component balances for A and B. OK, so now let's figure out how do we code this into our system. So we're going to open our simulation tool, which we're using Collimator. I'm going to just log in. You go to collimator.ai, log in. I'm already logged in. I'm going to go to my Smart Systems project. So in the previous video lecture, we did the volume balance already. So I'm going to start there, and I'm just going to duplicate this guy. And I'm going to just call this lecture 4, just so I'm saving my work from before and not having to worry about messing my, up my previous uh, model. OK, so I have taken our model from our last video lecture. It used to be called Tank. I've renamed that to be Reactor. When you click in on here, you see our simple volume balance, and you see our intermediate equations. So we're going to start from here. So now we're going to add to, this is our, our first differential equation. We're going to add to it with our other differential equations that we just described. So I've, I'm going to create some new variables, dCA, dt. And here I'm just going to plug in that same relationship that we just uh, derived. So my in term, my out term, this extra, I'll, I'll, I'll do my consumption term first, k0 times ca times volume, and then this leftover differential term that we have to keep to keep this mathematically accurate. We divided this whole thing by v. All right, so there, oh, and that, just be careful this doesn't automatically um, plug in some other variable that you don't want. Okay, similarly, I'm going to create the material balance for b. So here we have minus q out times CB plus K naught times CA times V minus our sort of this residual term from that uh, differential balance. And then again, this guy is divided by volume. All right, so we have the, I did it again, divide by volume, okay. So now we have the core equations built in there, but we don't have all the inputs defined yet. So CA0 is going to be a new input that our model needs. So I'm going to go over here to my inputs, and I'm going to say, give this my CA0. We're also going to need inputs for CA and CB. So I'm going to create two more inputs. Here we have CA. Here we have CB. We also introduced some new uh, parameters into our model. Specifically, we added this new parameter called k0. And that k0 has a value of 0 0.12. And let's see, are we missing anything here? I think we're OK. We have the d left over from before and c valve left over from before. All right, so now we've defined these new inputs. We need to define new outputs as well. So specifically, we want to export uh, CA, DCA DT and DCB DT from this model because we're going to need to run those to an integrator and cycle them back as the state variables. So I'm going to add these new inputs, DCA DT, as well as dcb dt. OK, so when we go back to our block diagram, notice that it automatically adds these new uh, input and output ports for us. That's really convenient. I'm just trying to rearrange things to make room for the new integrators that we'll have. OK, so our model calculates dca and dcb for us. 
and then it spits out the derivatives of each of those. So I'm going to want to copy this integrator just with a control C, control V. I'm going to rename this integrator CA because its job is to take DCA DT and integrate it with time. I'm going to just say our, my concentration is zero at the beginning. There's no concentration of A in the reactor at the beginning. I loop that around and I'm going to try and make this a little bit prettier. I'm going to change my initial condition on volume to be uh, 5 meters cubed and that is because we have a divide by volume in our code and that's going to cause errors if we have an actual volume of zero in this model. Okay, let's add the integrator for CB. Rename that to be CB. That guy also has an initial condition of zero. I'm going to connect that here. All right, and connect that here. Okay, so we still have our input QN. Let's just keep this at a constant flow rate for now. It starts at 5 and ends at 5. And let's add a new step here so that we can look at what happens to our reaction when we change the inlet concentration. So let's have this make a step change at a time of 30 minutes. And let's have this go from, let's start with a really low concentration of a, and then let's have it go up to a high concentration. So it's going to start at 5 kilomoles per cubic meter and then go up to 15. And so let's now go ahead and click on these outputs that we want. I'm not going to worry too much about plotting these, and I'm not going to worry too much about plotting our inputs. We just want to look at how our state variables change with time. So we're now compiling and running, and Collimator automatically pulls up these plots, which is really nice. Okay, so we do, our volume starts at 5, and then it's got to go reach its steady state. So it gets close to a steady state here. We are producing a concentration of A, about 2.98. Then, remember, we, at T equals 30 minutes, we suddenly increase the concentration of A, and that causes the reaction to happen more quickly. We're converting more A to B, but we're also accumulating more A because there's just more of it coming in than can be reacted. So that gets us up to a new near steady state of about 8.66, and this has units of kilomoles per cubic meter. And naturally, because we're putting in more A, we see that our, our B also reaches a steady state, and then when we put in more A, our B also reaches a higher concentration of 6.26. And just as a refresher, since these are both concentrations, it could be interesting to look at them both on the same plot. We can also, as a reminder, we can go back to our model and just hover over some of these signals and just look at, just have a quick little glance at what each of those signals looks like. So that's handy for doing some quick and dirty diagnosis there. Okay, that's it for today's video lecture. Um, stay tuned, we're going to move on to the next module after this where we'll be doing automation of systems.